Hi, and welcome to The Adult Life, where we give you the tools to be a happy and healthy adult. My name is Simi, and I'm the adult in charge. <laughs> so today's video was actually supposed to be the last in the How to Save Money in London series, but then I realized about a week ago, about a week ago, <laughs> So I realised about a week ago that I've actually been on YouTube for just over a month. So I thought instead of doing that video, which I'll postpone until later, I will just tell you guys how I found my first month on YouTube, whether I liked it, whether I didn't like it, the things I wish I knew before I started, because trust me, there are quite a few things, and my general experience and whether I would recommend it. So let's jump right in. So the first thing I wish I knew before starting a YouTube channel is that nobody cares about you. Nobody cares about me. Nobody really cares about anybody on this platform. Unless you already have a large following, nobody's going to be searching a day in the life of Simi or what does Simi do or what's Simi's new video. Nobody's going to be checking for me because they don't even know I exist. So it took a while for me to realise that I had to title my videos in a certain way that would allow people to search for me and find my videos. And honestly, it's not like people are really finding me though. <laughs> But I know it's because I'm a small YouTuber, I don't really have that reach yet and YouTube isn't really promoting my videos. And I don't blame them because I've been on the platform for a month. I could just go off tomorrow and never come back again. So finding a way to title my videos and also my thumbnails to make sure that people clicked on it was quite difficult and it's an ongoing learning process. So the second thing I wish I knew before starting a YouTube channel is videos don't blow up. That viral video that seems to have gotten a million views in two days, it wasn't by chance most of the time. They've done the keyword research, they've looked at other people's videos, they've improved on them, they're either, you know, trending on a topic, maybe the first person to talk about it, or maybe they already have a large following and they were just lucky that YouTube promoted their video and people seemed to like it. So I thought, you know, when I thought people cared about me, just put my video out into the YouTube sphere and it'll just blow and I'll get hundreds and millions of views and likes and it really doesn't work like that. So there's the YouTube algorithm that everybody's always talking about. And the algorithm basically decides what videos get promoted. So that's in your suggested videos at the side, that's um, on your homepage, that's also at the end of some videos when you watch and there's a new video next to it. So unless YouTube is promoting your video to people, nobody's gonna find you and your video can't go viral. So some people say that, oh, they've worked out the algorithm, they know what to do. And honestly, nobody knows. Nobody knows how the algorithm works, but there are some tips that in conjunction with the algorithm will help your video get promoted more. And if YouTube isn't promoting your videos, you're not going viral. Now, the third thing I wish I knew before going onto YouTube is something I already knew technically, and that's the consistency is key. So everybody always tells you before you start your YouTube channel, post one video a week, post two or three videos if you can, and being consistent over a long period of time is more likely to get you a big following. And yeah, that's true, I knew it. But what I didn't know is just how hard it is to be consistent. So I do my research for each video I do, so I'm talking about the title, the thumbnails, the keyword research, all of that. And that takes me about two days, obviously not two full days, but about two days of research to get that information. And then once I've done that, I have to film the video. And then after that, I have to edit. And at the end of the day, it can take four days for one video, four days. So you tell me, if it takes four days to make one video, how many videos do you think I could make in one week? That's right, one. And I have a life. I have other things that I do, like eating and sleeping, and four days for one video is a lot of time. Obviously, this is because I'm new and I don't really have my processes down, and there's a lot of things that maybe I could be doing better that I'm not yet, but it's a lot of effort for one video, and it's hard to be consistent when you know that that one video that you're going to make is going to take four days. So it definitely is a bit hard to be consistent. Some days I'm like, oh, is it worth it? Is it worth it? And then other days I just, you know, keep calm, carry on and get it done. So ultimately making videos that people are searching for that look good and that make people want to watch your videos and subscribe to your channel is hard and time consuming. The next thing I wish I knew, which I already did know as well, was that you can start YouTube with a small budget. So some people start their YouTube channels and they buy the $1,000 cameras and they're buying $100 tripods and they're buying microphones and lighting and all of that and it costs thousands and thousands. And I already knew from the beginning, I don't have money for all of that. So I decided not to purchase anything too expensive. What I did do though was purchase a new camera. And honestly, my cameras are not that new. It came out in 2012, which is eight years ago, which is a lot of time for tech. But one thing I realized is that I had an iPhone 6S at the time and the quality of the 6S is okay, but it's not amazing for YouTube. So I wanted to get a better camera that I could use to film my videos. Unfortunately, my 6S then started behaving madly. So I had to get a new phone anyway. So now I have an 11, which 
ironically has better camera quality than my camera and now I'm thinking oh did I waste my money getting a camera it wasn't that expensive it was about 200 pounds second hand so I didn't break the bank but now I'm thinking if I'd waited and started using my success I would have been able to maybe get a better first camera so instead of a t3i I'd have been able to get maybe a t5 or a t6i and that would have future proofed my camera so now I'm thinking oh did I make the right decision did I not but sometimes that's life and at the end of the day I can still sell this for around the 200 pounds that I got it for so all hope isn't lost just yet other things that I did buy though were a microphone because good sound is the baseline of a good video and one or two other small things like batteries that didn't really amount to much but I might as well have gotten anyway one thing that I can say about getting this DSLR is that if in the future I get a better camera I already have the basics of DSLRs so it won't be a huge learning curve starting from the beginning so at least I can take solace in that <laughs> even if my poor pocket won't the next thing I was showing you before starting a YouTube channel is this thing is killing me it's killing my soul it's killing my vibes it's killing everything and that's editing editing is time consuming so the last video that i edited took six hours six hours to edit and partly that's because my laptop is trash now i'm not bill gates shit i just bought a new phone i can't afford to buy a new laptop and it, it's working it's just not fast enough for video editing video editing needs computer with good specs and this one was the basic of basics because i just bought it to go on the internet with another issue is i've never edited anything before so the program i'm using hit from express is a free one because I'm not spending hundreds and hundreds on an editing software but because it's not iMovie or Final Cut Pro there's a bit less information on how to use it and how to make it work better for me so the program itself is intuitive but there's a lot of things that I just don't have a clue of what they are so I'm seeing things like trimming and clipping which is fine but I'm also seeing things like masks and effects and blurs and depth of field and I'm just like oh, what is all of this so I have the learning curve of how to understand editing software itself. Then I have actually getting the clips, which are about 30 to 40 minutes for each video, chopping them down, and then I have the trashy laptop on top, and that's what makes my editing six hours. So I'm hoping that when the newest MacBooks are released in October or so, they push down the prices of other ones, the older ones, and I'll get maybe a 2015, 2016 refurbished one, and that'll make my life so much easier. So the sick thing I wish I knew before starting a YouTube channel is that stats don't matter. So right at the beginning of my channel, you know, when I thought that my videos were going to blow up and go viral, I used to check my stats every day, like every, in the morning, check the views, in the afternoon, check the likes, in the evening, check the subscribers, and it was playing on my mind. I was just so upset. Why aren't people watching my videos? Oh, this person started at the same time as me. How come they've got double the likes or double the views and double the subscribers? So instead of me to be grateful that people like you are watching my videos and you're engaging with me and you're liking and you're commenting and you're subscribing, I was coveting other people's stats and that weighed so much on me. I'm not the kind of person that will go on Instagram and post videos for likes. So being like that on YouTube doesn't make sense. I came on YouTube to teach and to help people. So if one or two or even 10 people see my videos and they learn and they grow, then that's my mission accomplished. In fact, one of the things I did when I was really self-conscious about my channel and the stats is I hid my number of subscribers and I was thinking, who's going to watch my video when they can only see I have 33 subscribers? And it occurred to me that when I click on a video is because the title and the thumbnail enticed me to click on it. I'm not going to not watch somebody's videos just because they have a few subscribers. So why would I not assume that other people would do the same for me? And the last thing I wish I knew before starting a YouTube channel is that it can take a while to find my style. Yeah, right. <laughs> I should have known this because like I said, I had a blog about 10 years ago and I could see that my branding and my logo and everything evolved over the years. But maybe because I thought I really had that experience, I was really on myself to get my branding, to get my logo, to get everything done. And this was even before I started the channel or the blog. Looking back, it didn't really make sense to put so much pressure because at this point in time, 400 people have watched my videos. Nobody gives a damn about my branding apart from the one or two people that have come to tell me that they liked it. So why would I put so much pressure to create a brand that over time I can still change and nobody would say anything to me? It's madness, really. In fact, in my videos, you can see that I'm changing my branding like almost every day. I'm changing the overlays, I'm changing some of the textiles, I'm changing some of the colors, and nobody's complaining, so it really doesn't make sense to be all uptight about it so early. I was watching a video the other day, and I can't remember who said this video, by the way, but they were talking about your first few videos are gonna be trash. And my first videos, aren't trash but I can see some things that need to be improved but they then went on to say but as long as you're improving with every video you're going to get better and that's something I've taken to heart so now instead of trying to make every video perfect what I'm trying to do is improve one thing in each video so if my audio is bad in one video in the next video I'm correcting it if my overlays are janky in the next video I'm correcting it 
So I'm correcting something in each video. So for me, it's an iterative process. I just need to make sure that every video is better than the last. And in time, I know that the quality will be the same as the top YouTubers. So those are the top seven things that I wish I knew before starting a YouTube channel. And honestly, I can say that despite all the terrible and horrible things <laughs> that I've gone through, I really enjoyed it and I'm here to stay. There've been some tough times. Like my laptop's fallen on the floor, my camera's fallen on the floor. Everything's fallen on the floor at some point. I've had to re-record videos because my mic was off. Oh, those are painful. <laughs> but I know that the more videos I shoot, the more comfortable I get with the process. It will reduce in time each and every day. I'm really hoping to get my video creation process from four days to two days or maybe even one day if possible. And once I get to that point, I know that the sky's gonna be my limit. <laughs> There you have it. That's my one month review of YouTube. Do I think that you should start a YouTube channel? Yes, definitely. Is it saturated? Yes, definitely. But there's still room for one more. If you like this video, please like, comment and subscribe. And until next time, see ya. <laughs>